And today we wanted to discuss that, um, that um, we can manifest um, good things if we think about uh, positive, you know, if we think about things positively, we will bring positive um, vibes and events or occurrences back to us. Mm -hmm. so that is something I feel very passionately about. So why do you feel passionately about it? Yeah, I think it's kind of limiting um, for the people and it's almost like it creates this self-blame and anxiety that um, sometimes I think because we are human beings, it's impossible to stay positive all the time. And we're going to be what we're going to be. We're going to be angry. We're going to be upset. We're going to be emotional. We're going to be depressed. And we're going to be all those things. And um, we can't just say, I'm always thinking positive. And that's almost like denying a big part of ourselves. So you're concerned that it, it kind of limits the spectrum of what we allow ourselves to experience. Um, no, that's one that possible. almost stresses the people more out. I think that stress is almost worse than the, the stress that we have to deal with. Well, and another thing I think that we had talked about is the, the concern that when taken to its extreme is that if people believe that it's in their hands to manifest everything, that yeah. if they come down with some sort of condition, that, that they would then think that, oh, I've done something wrong because I've got this condition, it's my fault. If only I, you know, worked harder or to, to manifest something differently. So, um, but that said, for me, I think it's important not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I, um, like I've done, I've read a lot of Joe Dispenza's books. Um, and he wrote a book, for example, like Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself or Changing the Habit of Being Yourself. And everything is connected, right? So like the, what, what we're thinking is connected to how, what we're feeling. What we're feeling is connected to what we project to, to others and, and our beliefs and our behaviors and um, how we're responded to. And, and we do have agent, more agency and control over uh, things it can be really empowering yes. uh, to to actually in, in terms of um, manifesting to think that okay I, I do have control here about how I relate to things that happen I don't have control over everything that happens in my life but what I do have control over is how I relate to things that happen so things that come up I would like to write here so we can yeah. We talk about them. So one need is control. I think it's really important when we're diagnosed or dealing with um, chronic illness because it feels like our life is out of control. The other thing I hear you talking about is actually frame of reference, our frame of reference. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, you know, reference in the sense that it's different than um what people believe um for example so one of my clients um she's this young woman who survived breast cancer so when i first went to see her this is in a hospital she told me she got she knows this she got this because um her brother died at a very young age uh in a car accident and then slightly afterwards her father died so she began then um going from one doctor to the other thinking that she has something mm -hmm. and then finally she got diagnosed with breast cancer and she believed that this she brought this onto herself she really um made such um she worried so much she obsessed about this so she basically manifested this cancer so my response to her was so you don't think that your your agility helped you to get diagnosed at an early stage mm. you actually saved your life mm -hmm. so that's where my concern is you know the frame of reference Perspective. If our frame, yeah. yeah if we if we believe that we can bring cancer onto ourselves uh -huh. we can never or other illnesses mm -hmm. for that matter we can never i think come out of the state of mind that we have harmed ourselves so we're not okay basically right and so 
are self-healing. I think cure and healing are different things. Then cannot begin. And I think we need to not confuse causality with mm -hmm. contingency. Right. You know, causality versus contingency, that things can happen at the same time. Right. Versus we cause them to happen. Right. You know, I think it's such an important distinction. Um, someone changes something in their life or leaves their wife or, or, or breaks up with the girlfriend or right. vice versa. Something happens and then they get diagnosed with, let's say, um, pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And they, they're very likely to feel that um, they're guilty. So they, right. they put this onto themselves. Right. It's punishment, you know, something. Although they just chose to get out of a toxic relationship in reality. Right. So, and you well, see it a lot with 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 kids whose I mean this is not related to illness, but kids whose parents get divorced and um, they don't know how to uh, to process it, and uh, they assume that it has to be their fault. And unbeknownst to them, unconsciously, they may grow up to be adults. And something can happen and they can go back to that Absolutely. mindset in their heads, connecting the dots and thinking, oh, yeah, I am, this is because of me. I, right. I yeah, it's exactly very omnipotent thinking that yeah. kids tend to have. And it really is um, affecting our lives so badly. Something one of the, um, the oncologists I work with said, and I will never forget this, and I think we can say the same thing for chronic diseases you can't cause a landmine to go off by uh, just being depressed or upset or, mm. or or working too hard or you know just um it has to be co you know the biggest doctors to the state still don't exactly know what causes cancer mm. it's probably not a linear process it's a very complex mechanism mm -hmm. of um, gene expressions and enzymes and environment and mm -hmm. you know all sorts of things mm -hmm. and so we cannot you know there are lots of information going around on social media you know it's all uh, eat the lemon seeds they're against can i mean it's not it's not like um, you know, marijuana kills, uh, kills cancer cells. I mean, nothing is that simple. You know, right. people believe that there is a cure out there ultimately. And uh, we're being, um, th that is being held off because the medical companies are trying to make money, at blah, blah, blah. Yes, they do try to make money, but cancer is a very complex disease. It's not only one illness. There are many cancers, thousands of them maybe. So I don't think we can talk about curing one cancer so going back to my previous point um we cannot um initiate cancer we're not that powerful right also we cannot make it go away by just eating right and um staying away from stress and doing all the exercise unfortunately right i mean there are people that you know there are all the there are different people do things that are reported that you know they've changed their diet completely they've done this or that and it's and then they have found that they're cancer free and there there are a lot of variables that you see in terms of what certain people are doing there's a lot that we don't see in terms of what's going on inside the body and it's it's dangerous to assume or to i mean there are plenty of people that change their lives completely that don't cure themselves of an illness. So it's easy to find um, and focus on people that do, but if we, if we took all of the people and included all the people that have made drastic changes to their lifestyles and have not cured themselves, then we're left with um, something that's much more complex. And I think part of our goal here is not to be reductionistic and not to be not to just sort of simplify things in a way that's not helpful which i think one of the things that we need to talk about too is how to handle whether it's with cancer or any other um condition how do we handle all of the information that's out there because you can turn go on the internet and you can there there are people i've dealt with this personally where you know, and met people like, oh, you've got this type of muscular dystrophy. I can, you know, make it better. I can cure you. I wow. can, you know, I can get, and 
I've gone through times in my life where, of course, it, you know, my desperation and my need, it was like, okay, I'm, I'll do it. I've traveled around the world to, you know, meet with doctors and found sure. helpful things in the process. But when someone says to me, I can cure you, you know, at least now I'm at a point like, well, you know, I'm a lot more skeptical. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's something really important. It's like, how do we manage all of the information out there and decide what to try, what not to try? Same thing can be said for cancers. Yeah. I was working with this man who was suffering from pancreatic cancer and he was receiving his uh, chemotherapy and he was leading a good enough life, going to his work, you know, continuing to be a father for his family, a, a husband and had, a, you know, looked normal, had a good life. And so he was convinced, he got convinced that there is this guy in Germany who can help him with this particular um, blood whatever therapy. So he dropped everything. Mm -hmm. He went there, he got this treatment, mm -hmm. came back and died in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So that was very hard for me to take. He was my yeah. client and he died like what I call like, almost like jumping off a building. And that was very painful for me to watch. And, you know, complementary therapies or people who are healers, um, they can sometimes give us the hope that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Even some doctors. I mean, I've seen them, doctors abusing a patient who needs to really die peacefully. Right. And pumping them with lots of drugs and just prolonging their lives, not in a state that anybody wants to be. Right. Yes, they lived a few days longer, but that's not a good life. That's not right what a good doctor does right my mind at least so i think finding a balance between a hope and desperation and what's doable do i really want to do this right uh it's it's a tough job to do and i think maybe that's um what our process is very much like right and it's dynamic it, it changes like what i need now is different than you know what I needed 10 15 years ago and um, you know we grow emotionally uh, psychologically um, and physically in terms of uh, you know so it's it's not a static thing and um, there's a lot of trial and error and um, it's very personal and subjective and there are a lot of great pro professionals out there that have their best intentions in mind and are honest and and um and then there are people that'll promise you the moon and um you know are much more kind of uh megalomaniacal or just uh and unfortunately, unfortunately yeah well the words i think you use are important i think we need to use them because it's part of living with chronic illness so there is growth so there's growth and you have, I mean, you and I have grown a lot since we first met. Mm -hmm. And part of that is life. You know, we became middle-aged. Mm -hmm. We were young. Mm -hmm. We became middle-aged. And uh, we learned to, what it means to have a family. Mm -hmm. and, and having a family and you know, all the ups and downs and dealing with chronic illness. I mean, I forgot to say, I have a thyroid disease that I had to learn to live with. Hmm. And, you know, that is a chronic illness. So I'm discounting that already because it's not potentially life-threatening. Right. So interesting, isn't it? This is, that's a a, that's a, this is another topic that we need to address too, yeah. uh, about the sort of how people compare their, what they're going through with what other people are going through. And you know, people who have visible illnesses versus invisible illnesses, immune related or genetic. And, you yeah. know, there's like a, there's like a, you know, an unspoken hierarchy. Um, but obviously if you're, whatever it is that you're going through is what you're going through. And, exactly. and it is a, a life limiting illness. It is chronic. There is no cure for it. And you learn to live differently. It affects you. It affects mm -hmm. your emotions. It, it affects your productivity. It affects mm -hmm. a lot of things. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I also had to learn um, 
what is meaningful for me? You know, how do I make meaning of things? And I think that's a very important part of working or living mm. with any illness. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to write it down as well. So I think meaning making is a very important part. Huge. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things I would say, if I had to have a, like a tagline, something that I think is the most important thing that I've learned, uh, is that there's not an inverse relationship between well-being and, you know, my physical condition. So uh, I'm 42 now. I'm a lot more affected physically than I was when I was 30. Mm -hmm. but I'm a lot happier and more content than I was. And to me, that's the most profound thing because it's not that's something that doesn't just have to do with me. Uh, you know, I've seen it. Um, I'm working with someone who has muscular dystrophy who's 75. We started working together five years ago. His life has changed. He's changed so much in his life in five years. He's in a, a wheelchair per permanently. He needs help feeding himself, bathing. And he's happier now than he was five years ago. So th there is a truth, a profound truth to that that is what I feel like is a huge part of our work together. It's about exploring and fleshing out and helping people to, um, challenging people and helping people to explore and discover themselves. Um, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I help, I, I work with people who, who are going through cancer and they know they're gonna die, I know they're gonna die, but they can still enjoy their lives fullest we can laugh together we can cry together but it's very different than um feeling like i'm doomed and uh, my life is over and also um i think very important expectation is not to expect that we're going to have absolute health and that's something that i feel also mm. very strongly about i think this the media and the society imposes mm -hmm. on us this mm -hmm. image that we're going to be all bright, shiny, uh, happy, yeah, <laughs> super fit, and mm -hmm. you know all those uh, kind of people. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a huge disappointment in ourselves somewhere when we realize that we aren't right. And I think that's, um, you know, I think health is somewhere between um, dying and living absolute with absolute health, and we are all somewhere on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's all valid and it can all be meaningful. Right. You know, I talked with a professor on mm -hmm. the phone. Um, so I was trying to get into uh, a course and I found out that he's, um, he's a quadriplegic and I was so impressed by him, the way he's talking, the way he has worked through um, his condition and mm. was so profoundly um, powerful in many ways. It was so impressive. Mm -hmm. You know, there's about not feeling like the victim, and right. yet sometimes we will, and that's right. okay too. Right. But it's about, you know, accepting our truth, I guess, and mm -hmm. owning it. You know? And yeah, and it's this, it's a, it's a dance, like a never ending dance between accepting it, owning it, pushing limits, challenging our own assumptions, learning how to take care of ourselves. Um, and it, it's, it's always changing, just like, you know, chronic illnesses are always changing. And, you know, from one day to the next, you could have a day where you feel really good. And then mm -hmm. the next day, you can feel like you can't get out of bed. And, how do you deal with that? And how do you deal with that in a world where if you're, if you're working and not on, you know, disability, um, how, how do you navigate those things? Um, I think women can relate to this easier because, because of our hormones, we go through life a bit like that anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a day to day experience. Mm -hmm. and as you get older, especially after having children, mm -hmm. it becomes even more pronounced. Mm -hmm. It did it at least for me, and I know from my friends and from my clients, it mm -hmm. is for them as well. So this up and down, 
and having to learn to live with it is, is, is a very familiar experience. But I can imagine for men is a bit more difficult. Mm. Also, that's there's a, that's that's another a, thing that we, I mean, there's so much to talk about. And it's good that I'm a man and you're a woman because we have these different um, perspectives. And obviously, not in terms of generalizing, because, but in terms of um, just, you're absolutely right. I mean, there are going to be certain issues that um, affect men, a lot of men differently than they would affect women. And for example, I think for me, you know, being, being physically limited and not being able to be a father who throws his kids up in the air uh, and goes out and plays sports with my, my kids and, and does all the physical stuff that is sort of traditionally associated with being a dad um, has been posed a whole host of challenges. And, um, and I've imagined it would be easier as a woman, if I were a woman um, in that respect. Um, yeah, and also I think um, men experiencing it as loss of power, uh, women experience it, experience it as more of like becoming dependent and how that mm. will make them vulnerable towards others. Mm -hmm. And I, I, have, I have a very dear friend, she used to have a full-fledging Fully, fully, fully fledged practice before and she has a mess and these fluctuations that you're talking about um, really prevented her from working um, you know as we go, go along and I think if she was a man and she, if she was the um, the major money maker of the family it would have been a much uh, more difficult thing for that family mm -hmm. whereas her husband was more than happy to take care of her i mean they're right. decent as well but then imagine if you're a single mom yeah or a single dad for that you know reason so right. it's always difficult yeah it is all right i think this is good for the first one the first one no there's a, a lot a yeah. lot here